Hello, this is Tyler Crone with The 36. We are so delighted this afternoon to be in conversation with Geralee Anderson, who is running for Commissioner of Public Lands. Geralee, over to you to introduce yourself and welcome. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for having me. My name is Geralee Anderson. I am currently serving my seventh year on the Redmond City Council, and I'm running for Commissioner of Public Lands this November. I'm running for Commissioner of Public Lands to help Washington get beyond business as usual, and I believe I'm just the type of person who can make that happen. As a leader, my values are integrity, stewardship, inclusiveness, and inspiration, and I build and maintain my professional, personal, and political relationship around these democratic values. I believe these are values that are an uh, uh, antidote to political poison like corruption, disempowerment, and mediocrity, which I can't stand. Uh, and I bring a lot of experience to this position. I'm running for commissioner because as a social ent entrepreneur, an engineer, and a CEO, I'm not allergic to change, failure, or accountability. I've been through all of those things um, throughout my life. And today, facing the global threats of climate change and systemic inequalities, we need someone as commissioner with experience who can make bold system-level changes quickly and transparently to get on a positive trajectory for the state. With trust in government at an all-time low, it is critical for the Department of Natural Resources to have leadership backed with the knowledge and experience that is not afraid of change. And as a council member, I have a proven track record of delivering on climate change, green energy, and infrastructure goals, as well as supporting our fabulous public safety department to advance emergency preparedness throughout the city. And I'm running for commissioner because I want the responsibility for building new initiatives that benefit everyone in the state, no matter who you are, what you look like, who you worship, or who you love. In my day job, I'm proud to have created an environmental sustainability rating system that is my legacy for infrastructure. This gives me a perspective on best practices from around the world that I can bring to this state. So imagine for the moment what we can do with my mindset, your experience, your ideas, and um, the DNR budget. And with your help, I believe I can win this race. I'm the best fit candidate for the job and that we can change the world together. So thank you so much for your time. I'm really uh, looking forward to this interview. And if you're interested, please sign up on my email list. I have a little bit of a late start, but I'd love to stay in touch with you throughout this campaign. So thank you so much. Thank you. Our first question this afternoon will be asked by Laura Marie. Hi, thank you so much for coming in. Um, DNR has a, an important role generating non-tax revenue for the state. How will you balance the need to generate trust revenue with other values that the state lands provide, such as carbon storage and habitat? This is a great question. Um, I come at it from an experience of working in an environment where we talk about ecosystem services having an added value or a understanding of a value over time. And so recognizing the trust revenue is definitely an important part of sustaining those DNR programs. But the concept of making sure that development should pay for development and not overburden the system and making sure that those uh, the ecosystem services that are provided by our forests that to store uh, carbon as well as uh, create habitat for our wildlife throughout the state. This is really important from a public lands perspective to also support um, the, the long-term value and uh, environmental costs that are associated with those things throughout the state. Thank you. Our next question will be asked by Amanda. In recent years, DNR has sought to take new actions to support healthy forests and reduce wildfire risk. What are your thoughts on steps taken so far and are there changes or additions to this approach that you would bring what are your perspectives on the DNR Correctional Camps Program having incarcerated individuals work in wildfire suppression? Uh, this, this is also a very complicated question. There's a couple of them, and I'll do it one at a time. Um, one of the, uh, the state legislation that was passed, HB 1578, focused a lot on the urban wildland boundary and smoke readiness for communities, which I really liked. It acknowledged the reality of, reality of climate change impacts on communities throughout the state and uh, health and well-being, as well as the impacts of growth where they are most noticeable to folks. So I totally understand that. That was a great start. I'm looking forward to working with that legislation and making sure that actions go forward for those risk assessments. Looking forward specifically to the outcomes of that and how we could advance in uh, any of that preventative work in areas where some of the vulnerabilities throughout our state are already known. Specifically, I'd like to ensure that the approach is um, using an equity lens to apply to communities where they're most vulnerable and where we could look for partnership opportunities with other departments and boards across the state for investing there first. Uh, specific to the correctional camps program, not totally familiar with the program. However, I don't see any particular uh, preventive uh, 
any any particular concerns up front about that. Um, if there are safety concerns, I would expect that the law enforcement community and uh, would work with the corrections departments and making sure those individuals are effectively managed and cared for as well. I do think it's important to have a willingness to work and something valuable to commit to for folks in incarceration. So thank you. Thank you so much. Our next question is DNR has a large staff distributed across programs and regions, including seasonal employees. How would you build help build the strong, effective relationships for staff and teams across the state? And what steps would you take to improve equity and environmental justice outcomes for Washington State? In Great, great question. Um, building strong and effective partnerships takes time and care to identify and develop these relationships. So that would be a large part of my job as the executive um, coming in with prior experience uh, personally and relationships at both the private and public sector at the local, regional and state levels will also help to build that trust and collaboration, starting with those initial relationships, those warm relationships, and then also doing a lot of outreach to uh, connect with new folks and new people in different positions as um, the elections will change that, of course. On the labor side, I'm a big fan of community workforce agreements and local opportunities for volunteering and conservation activities, partnering with local governments uh, to help get folks out in the community and uh, work with nature and in the environment. On the environmental justice side, I think it should focus on restoring access and opportunity as well as undoing past harm, which means enabling both the public and private investment in cleanup efforts, recreation infrastructure, and wildfire prevention in distressed and severely distressed communities as a priority. And it also means establishing wealth creation opportunities for disadvantaged communities and small businesses through actions like the community workforce agreements or workforce development programs. Thank you so much. Our last question this afternoon will be asked from Don. Don, I what think you, you, there you go. Thank you so much. What do you anticipate will be the biggest challenge you would face as lands commissioner if elected? I think this is a great question. Uh, the biggest thing that's coming to the state is going to be the World Cup. Um, biggest challenges in that regard will be sustainable resourcing for ma major infrastructure construction projects that we'll be having going on throughout the state and the workforce development that's going to be necessary for uh, enabling all of that construction. Um, I feel like I bring a, uh, a lot to the table in that matter. I've been working in sustainable transportation for over a decade. Uh, so this is a huge need for building materials and the labor and, and anticipating the needs that more people will be traveling to and from the state as well and all the concerns that come with that. Thank you so much. This concludes the formal part of our interview and now we will do follow-up questions and we will take them one by one by the board. Laura Marie, I see your hand first. Hi again. Um, can you tell us, uh, this is a really big role, and what, as a relative newcomer to the race, what made you excited about it and uh, got you to run? And if you want to squeeze in what the TEDx talk that's linked on your website is about. Sure. Um, I'll, 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 my background is in uh, construction engineering. I've been working in uh, sustainable transportation. I developed the sustainability rating system. Um, and been kind of working on that for over 15 years now. Um, so what got me into this particular race, I just finished another race last year, did not win, unfortunately, um, but I have been on the council and looking for advancing opportunities in uh, a role where I feel like I would be an effective executive. Uh, and that would be one interest area for me personally is climate change and environmental sustainability. It's sort of my, my jam and uh, the TED talk is related to that, kind of what that vision could look like for um, connecting communities and the environment. Um, through infrastructure, which we often take for granted. And so thinking about the DNR position where we end up using a lot of our natural resources, um, which is aggregates and rocks and also um, forest management, wildfire, I'm a big fan of firefighters. I love our public safety teams. Uh, so this is a, sort of a, a role that I feel is built for some of the values that I really care about and um, would really love to uh, see some of the things that I've been working on personally at the state level get initiated and um, seen through in, in the next term. Thank you so much, Don. 
Hi, I put it also in the chat for you to read. Um, with the West Seattle Rail and South Kirkland Issaquah links expected to be completed in the next 20 years, as well as increased mixed use residential development, which endangers the natural beaver habitats and correlated salmon hatcheries in Issaquah and Longfellow Creek. How can you protect the beaver habitats and salmon habitats in King County and beyond? Nisqually, for instance. I think the first answer to that would be uh, working with local governments and county government partnerships um, through the state and making sure that the uh, needs to meet the fish, pas fish passage requirements and our restoration goals is going to be a collaborative one and that the, the local governments are adequately resourced for um, meeting those needs, especially in the county levels um, and working through that. Um, I'll give an example of uh, an idea that I have. I've uh, been serving as a volunteer on the public works board for the state. And we did a lot of work with um, uh, re reimagining how we finance some of these projects so that we can prioritize certain areas as well as um, the, uh, in terms of distressed communities as well as severely distressed communities and really thinking about how we apply that. Um, this could also apply in an environmental context as well and making sure that we're investing where we see these needs uh, that are maybe constrained by uh, the development. Uh, rapid development does have degradation um, impacts for a certain uh, certain communities more than others. So we, we would be making sure we would invest those resources and leverage the resources to the maximum extent feasible. Thank you so Thank much. You. Let me pause here and see if there, I see a hand from Stephanie. Yeah, just a very high level one. Um, I'm curious, would you, would you characterize your um, candidacy or like how you would um, anticipate being in office as lands commissioner as um, kind of similar carrying on of some of the policies of the current commissioner or do you feel like you have some some you know big changes that you would be excited to bring and if so what are those that's a great question um i did appreciate the the track that's been uh, put on by uh, commissioner franz um in terms of uh, especially with the legislation that's coming into play i think there's a it sounds like there are a lot of open questions on um, understanding where some of the vulnerabilities are in the state. I would love to spend some more resources on understanding that um, and so that we can capture some of that low hanging fruit, especially in, in terms of wildfire risk and um, preventative uh, actions that are possible. I'm also really interested in working with and collaborating with the tribal communities so we understand and can recognize and acknowledge the work that's um, gone, there, uh, gone on already plus um, making sure that that collaboration has, um, has an effective outcome. Um, so those are some general uh, directives that I would say are, are really areas of interest for me. And then uh, making sure that there's a advance for um, what the state really is in terms of preparedness. I, I, specifically, I think that smoke readiness, nobody likes wildfire smoke um, and it affects everybody's communities and everybody's health. Um, so understanding what we can do there differently um, to engage our, our uh, fire prevention community and educate communities, that's going to be really important as well. Thank you so much. Let me see if there is a follow-up. Otherwise, we'll provide you the opportunity to share anything else you'd like us to know. I don't see any hands, so why don't we turn it back to you? And if there's anything else as a, a kind of wrap-up closing statement or any, you know, any, any other elements that you'd like to share this afternoon. Uh, certainly. Um, so if you're interested in helping out with my campaign, I did just get started. So I'd be really interested in, um, you can support and volunteer for my organization or my, I'm sorry, my my uh, campaign, and then also um, support and fundraise with me. And I would really appreciate it. Uh, thank you so much for your support and your vote. Thank you so much for being with us this afternoon. And this concludes the formal part of our interview. So we will close our recording.